Now there's 11 of us, each with an equal share. You do the math. On this week's episode of Remakes, Remakes what, what Were, were they, they Thinking? We look at the 1960 and 2001 films Ocean's Eleven. Let's start with a 1960 original film. Okay, so our plot is pretty simple. We have 11 men who serve together as the 82nd Airborne Unit in World War II. And they have this foolproof plan to rob five casinos. Simultaneously. In Las Vegas on New Year's Eve at midnight. But since they're military trained men, they could carry that off without a problem, you right? Think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Anne, where'd this story come from? Oddly enough, mm -hmm. Peter Lawford heard it from a gas attendant. Awesome, so three he, jobs. He took the story to Frank Sinatra and they mm -hmm. thought, hmm, what a great idea for the Rat Pack. Who are the Rat Pack? Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. The film also featured Angie Dickinson and Peter Lawford. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the plot for the 2001 remake. Okay, so right off the bat, we have 11 guys. Were they friends? Yeah, um, ish. I mean, they're working acquaintances. So criminals. Um, well, they were con artists. Okay. And uh, some were ex-cons. Criminals. Um, mm, uh, Look, they all kind of knew each other from the thing and the guy in the place, and one of them may have, may or may not have gotten whacked at one point. Who knows? Um, but Danny Ocean, one of the main guys, is out of prison, and within 24 hours, on his parole, decides, I got the heist to end all heists. Just like that. Just He's like putting that. Putting it together. Putting it together. Calling up the guy. He says, let's knock the main vault to three major casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. But only three? Well, this main vault mm -hmm. is worth over $150 million. Oh, whereas in the 1960 version, it was 100,000 inflation. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Hey, was there a Rat Pack in the remake? Not a Rat Pack per se, but we did have a trifecta of actors, starting with the great George Clooney, mm -hmm. followed by Brad Pitt, mm -hmm. and then we had Matt Damon. And Andy Garcia. Uh, he doesn't count, though, in my opinion, because he was allegedly rude to John Mulaney at a Lakers game. Oh, that's right. So I guess we should dive into the heists since both films have 11 guys knocking off a bunch of casinos for a bunch of money. So in the 1960 version, it's basic. The money in the casinos is stored in this back room and just piled on a table. There's one level of security to get past. Only one. Whereas in the 2001 version, they have multiple levels of security. Some require voice identification or a thumbprint. And they know they're not going to get access to this. So they come up with clever ways and how they're going to infiltrate the system. Now, they do have a software engineer who does a lot of undercover um, work, and he essentially is hacking, but they never say they're hacking into the system. They do system. not. Do they Be even say they're overriding? I don't think so. Not really. I think it's because the internet was still too new in 2001, and we don't want the general public to be alarmed by the word hack. Can I just mention that in the 1960 version, one of their tactics was using a, a special spray to make glow-in-the-dark <laughs> footprints. It was genius. And the was same it? Time, was it? Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, when I see a guy going in a, 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 a back door who doesn't work for the establishment, I immediately, like, freak out. He swallowed the footprints. I just had to mention that. So did they carry out the heist? Absolutely. In both films? Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Uh-oh. In the 1960 version, they carry out the plan. Mm -hmm. The money is taken out secretly in a garbage truck. Mm -hmm. Then it's taken to the dump, mm -hmm. hidden there. But 
they didn't know that one of their buddies, the electrician, Tony, ended up having a heart attack while he was carrying it out. Falls to the ground, drops dead and then what in the middle say? of the street. And he goes, never the luck, never the luck. <sighs> Bad dose of karma. Mm. So they figure that the widow, separated widow, is going to ship the body out to San Francisco. Well, originally, she was going to do that. She and... was going to do that. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, let's put the money in the casket. But then the coroner gives her a great idea to just have a funeral in Las We can Vegas. give him a really good funeral we here. We have an American Legion. So the, yes, we'll give him a good service. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting in this uh, little mm, chapel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And they're having the service. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, one of the guys says, what's that noise? And they said, oh, they're cremating the body. Oops. Bye, money. So what about the 2001? They walk away like this. And end up $13 million richer each. Can we talk about the music in the 1960 film? Why not? Okay, so although it's not a musical, we do have the Rat Pack featured in this film. So, Anne, who sang and who did it? What a treat. We started out with Dean Martin singing. He wasn't drunk either. No, he wasn't. And he was a lounge singer mm -hmm. in one of the casinos. Makes sense. Yeah. And then the first time we see Sammy Davis, he's singing a swing tune. Yeah, to his co-workers. And, and honestly, if he wasn't singing in a scene or humming to himself or whatever, he was smoking. So either smoking or singing. Glorious voice nonetheless. Great voice. I've got to add more of him to my collection. Absolutely. What about Mr. Chairman of the Board? Not a note. What the hell, Frank? What's up with that? What the hell? Was it in your contract? You can only have so many films with singing? Were you just not up to it? Did you get tired of it? Are you bored? Hmm. But I want to quickly mention that the score for the film was by Nelson Riddle. He does fabulous work. Love to be able to sing with him. Also, we got a peek into who the real entertainment was featured at the different casinos. For example, we had Louis Prima with Keely Smith, hmm. Danny Thomas and Red Skeleton, Donald O'Connor, Patrice Munsell, and Buddy Hackett. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So I've got to ask. Okay. We usually take notes when we're watching the we films. We always take notes when right? we watch these films. But I noticed you were keeping a tally of something. What, what were you counting I for the was. 2001 remake? I was counting how many times Brad Pitt's character, Rusty, was eating. Oh my gosh. In just about every scene, Rusty was consuming some form of fast food or junk food, whether it be jelly beans, a burger, water ice. I think there was some fruit occasionally. Nonetheless, I tallied 11. So if that was on purpose because our Ocean's movie 11? is Ocean's well, Eleven, that's pretty brilliant. What about the shrimp? So there is a scene where Brad Rusty is eating shrimp cocktail. And, you, and it's in a bowl. It's in a glass bowl with a mm -hmm. sauce, all right? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden... It's on a plate. Mm -hmm. And then it's back to the bowl. Yeah. yeah. To know Well, I mean, whatever the problem was, clearly the takes were good. But I read that Brad ended up consuming 40 pieces of shrimp oh. during that filming period. Yuck. Gross. That's a lot. That's a lot. So much like our episode on Treasure Island, we're dealing with two films with primarily male-dominated casts. Yikes. Except for the fact that both films contain a single ingenue. That would be Angie Dickinson in the original picture. There were a couple other female non-essentials, and women were referred to as dolls or dames. And at one point, they talked about how women should be slaves, but we're not even going to touch on that garbage. We never said it. So, but 2001... Our ingenue, Julia Roberts, who plays Tess. Mm. What'd you think of Julia you Roberts? Know, I pictured someone that would play that role would be sophisticated and, and walk with a nice saunter mm -hmm. and hold her head up. And I didn't like her portrayal, okay? I'm sorry. Look, I, didn't I don't like understand her. the appeal of I don't Julia get Roberts, either. so we're just going to move on. So we don't have any villains in this film, per se. Just seedy characters. Seedy 
reform mobsters who basically are do some very dirty business okay for instance in the 2001 version we have the owner of the three casinos benedict played by andy garcia who was allegedly rude to john mulaney at a lakers game allegedly mm -hmm. and he is the type of guy who threatens and basically what, was he, what did he say he said something really if you he always has eyes on all of his hotels and casinos and it is mentioned several times that if he even finds out that you're gonna knock off his casino he'll kill you and then he'll go to work on you in the 1960 version, we had Duke Santos, mm -hmm. who was played by Cesar Romero. Man, that guy's tall. Anyway, he wanted to be able to cut a deal with the thieves because he found out what was going on. And he was more He was a seedy, reformed but, mobster. So he was seedy, but with class. And he was also going to get married to Peter Lawford's character's mother in the film. She was going to get married for the fifth time. I don't so, know. There's an yeah. extra, extra story that didn't extra need story to. that didn't need to be told. No. I want to talk about the cameos. Okay. In the original picture of 1960, Shirley MacLaine is featured as this tipsy woman. She was hilarious Dropping as a drunk. Keys. She was hilarious. And also, Red Skeleton, mm -hmm. he played a minor role. You saw his name that he was going to be performing. But he goes to the window to get a check cash to gamble. And they portrayed him as kind of a bad gambler. Whoops. Whoops. And the 2001 version, they had Wayne Newton, because why not? He's there already. Why not? And Siegfried and Roy. Mm-hmm. And then you had two returns from the original film. You had Angie Dickinson and Henry Silva. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it's safe to say we need to start wrapping things up here. It's time to decide mm -hmm. remakes. What worked, what didn't work. Okay. Let's start with 1960. Okay. So, um, I didn't like the 1960 version. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I know I do this like every week when we do these things, but like, it shouldn't take 30 minutes for me to realize they're gonna knock off a bunch of casinos. And then we shouldn't have another 30 minutes after the initial um, crime for a new subplot. I found some of the dialogue very problematic. I also didn't appreciate the fact that I didn't know who the characters were. Um, kudos though, I did enjoy seeing Peter Lawford shirtless, that was delicious. <laughs> and, um, I really, really enjoyed Sammy Davis Jr. Like, his entire performance, the singing, the acting, his cute little jokes, like, that was the only reason I kept watching. Me, mm -hmm. 1960, I like to see old films, and I'd never seen this picture before. Okay. It did drag. I did enjoy the bit of music that was interspersed in the film, but I, too, agree it could have been tightened up. One thing I did read was that they did allow some improvisation with the actors, so hmm. that could have been part of the problem with that. Yeah. But I like to see the art of the picture because I do like old films. But in terms of it being a suspenseful heist, it wasn't that suspenseful. No. Sorry. No. I like heist action films. So if you're not going to provide me with that action, then baby's not interested. So would you say that in this time, the remake is actually better than the original? I would say that. Um, okay. I adore Ocean's Eleven. And look, it's not about the actors. It's not about who's in it and everything. The movie is genius. Like, I don't. the dialogue is fast and witty the action sequences are in my opinion fantastic i mean i was like she, she, yeah she didn't scream but she did get a little you know oh my god um this may is, i can yeah. i oh okay um in terms of remaking this picture the characterization is better you could follow the characters mm -hmm. because there was definite who is who is who yep. whereas in the other picture a lot of men same age dark slick back hair um, the dialogue is very well written, some Indeed. wonderful underlying humor, and obviously the introduction of all that technology that really, really moved the plot along, that, that was just amazing. 
So yeah, it did work better. Yeah, it kept you absolutely. on the edge of your seat. Yeah, absolutely. And you really didn't think that it was gonna it was happening, right? You didn't think it was they were gonna pull it off, the heist <laughs> that is. So our next couple of episodes, we came up with an awesome theme for June. Movies turn into musicals. Now I know what you're thinking. We've done this before, but we figured let's do it again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> so. And what's the first film we're going to watch? We're going to watch something I've never seen before. Hairspray. And then we'll watch the musical version of Hairspray. And I didn't know there was a non-musical version, so that'll be a treat. John Waters, great guy. So, next week we have Hairspray, and then the week's following will be... Oh, let's keep it as a surprise. All right. Okay. Until then, as always, stay safe. Keep in touch. Take care. Wear your mask. And say bye to Bubba. Say bye. Bye, Bubba. We love you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. bye.